before we can, can dive into and, and really look at the core concepts for automation cybersecurity, it's helpful to first define a basis and understand when we say automation cybersecurity, what do we mean? And so by definition, this is the prevention of intentional or unintentional interference with the proper operation of automation systems, anything from industrial control, smart manufacturing, industrial internet of things, essentially any control network that is modifying physical equipment using a, a computer-based network or other programmable or configurable components. And now automation cybersecurity goes by many different names, everything from SCADA security to process control network security, um, industrial automation and control system, or just industrial control system. And so there are many different terms that, that may be used. What we will standardize and use primarily in this course, um, which is aligned with the IEC 62443 standards, is the term industrial automation and control systems, or IACS. Now, when we look at, at OT or IACS, we can see that they have different priorities than a typical IT system. And so for corporate or business networks, the number one priority for the data that they're protecting is confidentiality and maintaining that sensitive data, ensuring that you know, no unauthorized users are able to gain access or, or have that data be stolen is the primary goal um, and, and really their, their number one objective. Whereas integrity and system availability are less critical. And a good way that we can kind of see the availability being less critical on the IT side would be to think about a system update or how for you know a, a laptop connected to the business network, if a user doesn't have access to that laptop for you know, say five minutes when an update is being installed, that's really going to have a negligible consequence. On the other hand though, when we talk about operations technology, availability is paramount and is the number one priority that must be maintained. Because um, for example, if a programmable logic controller is unavailable for five minutes, that could have a major impact on the system and would most likely result in a process shutdown or another undesirable event. And so we have to, to see that the priorities on our OT side um, are actually the opposite of what we would look at on the traditional IT security side. In addition to having different priorities, there's also different experience between the IT and the OT groups. The typical IT lifecycle is very quick to turn around uh, and it may change you know, roughly every three to five years, whereas for OT, Equipment has a much longer life cycle and may be in use for 15 to 20 plus years. And as a result of that, you know, we often have a more difficult time securing and updating legacy equipment on the OT side um, because it's not as practical to update that as frequently. And we are somewhat limited in the ability to, to update that system and make more frequent changes. We can also look at from a staffing perspective that outsourcing and using external parties for IT support is relatively common. Typically we have dedicated plant resources or in some cases we may have a dedicated system integrator who provides support, but it tends to be much more localized whereas IT resources may be spread widely. From a patching perspective, this also tends to be much more common or much more frequently completed on the IT side. Um, you could think about, you know, Tuesday updates for Windows devices and really that when those updates become available, they are tend to be applied as, as soon as possible. For the OT side, because patching and downloading updates to um, the firmware for PLCs and other network equipment has the potential to trigger an availability concern. This tends to be done much less frequently on the OT environment 
and more as an as needed basis if there is a specific security vulnerability that needs to be updated or a specific feature that's needed. And so the patching has to be planned more in advance and there will be some additional steps that go into that. For antivirus and you know, endpoint protection, this is very common on IT systems and tends to be pretty well implemented. On the OT side, older legacy systems may not support the use of antivirus, which may make it more difficult to apply and use that on the system. And, and that's particularly because on those older systems, it could have a negative impact on the real-time process control software and, and could be an availability concern. Now, this is an area that, that has been changing over time. And so now all of the major uh, equipment suppliers are supporting antivirus on their DCS control system platforms. And so this is something that is starting to improve for the OT networks. From an awareness perspective, in general, IT has a, a much longer or has been more aware of cybersecurity for a longer period of time, and so tends to have very good cybersecurity awareness. However, IT is not as familiar with the process safety implications and may not be aware of the physical impacts that a compromise of a control system could have. Alternatively, for OT systems, cybersecurity awareness has in the past been relatively poor, where there's really just been a focus on making sure that the system is running and maintaining and, and keeping that uptime. I would say that we're getting more towards the improving area because this has been a, a much larger area of focus in recent years and something that sites are continuing to look at and to really try to improve and grow on. And while that is improving, in general, the OT awareness for process safety risks is much more mature than on the IT side because they're physically working with the sites and are familiar with those areas. We can also think about the risk assessment level of granularity. And so when an OT cybersecurity risk assessment is done, they're really trying to understand what is the impact at an individual loop level to understand what are the most critical parts of the system and what sort of process excursion could be caused by an attack. Whereas an IT risk assessment would typically take a much coarser view and look at the OT system really as one, one area. And so thinking about all control loops. Uh, and so depending on the level of information that's available, you know, they may be able to accurately capture the worst case or because they're not going to that finer level of detail, there may be scenarios that are missed from that course level of assessment. From a change perspective, in general, it's relatively easy to implement changes on the IT network, whereas for the OT network, it can be much more difficult to implement changes. We typically need to follow a standardized management of change process and really consider what potential impacts any changes to the network equipment ha could have on the operating process or lead to, you know, is there that possibility that they could lead to a negative availability impact? And then the last piece that, that's really interesting to talk through is to think about the terminology and to understand that you know, the IT and OT groups may really have a pretty far separation in their standard terminology. And so it wouldn't be uncommon for an IT resource to talk about thousands of possible threats per hour, where for internet connected systems, there's gonna be a very high frequency of untargeted and unskilled attacks occurring um, alternatively, an OT group might discuss a process excursion and say that a high temperature scenario gutting above a control set point is only tolerated once in a thousand years. And so just in those two examples, you know, we have six orders of magnitude difference between you know, what may seem common to an IT group versus the OT group. And so we really want to think about breaking down these differences in the experience and understanding any terminology or you know, other core differences that would need to be overcame.